What's up, everybody? Aaron here with Simplicity, and today we're going straight into the five top cloud storage sites that you can use to use put place files from work, your personal stuff, and everything, get it connected on all of your devices, and for all of these softwares too, to be able to edit them on each of these devices, which is honestly an amazing thing that comes with all this new technology we're having that if it's not just on your computer, have it be on someone else's computer, aka the cloud, and allow that to allow all of your devices to work seamless, seamlessly with different files. And what we're going to figure out is a lot of these softwares, if every single device can work with them, and even some of them, devices like the iWatch, you can view Excel sheets and all that other jazz. So it's truly one of those moments where you're like, dang, we're kind of in the future at, at, at this point. <laughs> but going into it, the top five right away off the bat, don't want to waste your time with you having to wait all the way 10 minutes into the video to actually see these softwares. We got Google Drive, iCloud, Microsoft OneDrive, Dropbox, and then also our simply branded box. Um, all of these guys are amazing. They all have free plans, so you can kind of start off and get a feel for them individually before you end up stepping into an actual maybe a bigger plan. None of these free plans are limited on a time trial, too. So say you only are going to really list, realistically need five gigabytes of data, um, then all of a sudden you realize, shoot, I can use every single one of these services except Dropbox, and I won't even have to pay a single penny, which is a great thing to, or a great situation to be in at this time period. So going into our number one, kind of the main OG in this space of cloud storage is Google Drive. Everybody right off the bat has, I think, 15 uh, gigabytes on their Google Drive account. A lot of students use this because um, a lot of the best things about Google Drive is not just the fact of the free storage, but the fact that any type of file like it's listing here is usable with their stuff. A lot of them are the exact same way, but not only are you able to use those files and view them, but other people in your group can all edit the file at the same time. So say this is a group PowerPoint, say this is some type of Word document that you're sharing with a developer and that you guys are going back and forth and whatever on. A um, lot of different options and including just the bare bone fact that you're using one of the biggest companies in the game, Google, and the fact of the matter is their software is just consistent as it gets. There's honestly a lot of cool little gimmicks and features that come with this collaboration tools with them and you really can't go wrong with this service. And that's one of the things that you're gonna find going into a lot of these options is that's like, shoot, this guy's good, that guy's good. Oh, that guy's awesome, awesome too, you know? Um, and one of the biggest things and kind of the one that has a leg up in the game in some features is our guy OneDrive from Microsoft. And so what OneDrive offers that makes it unique to the other options and isn't just like, oh, it's seamless with that, you can do this with your files, is since Microsoft owns it, they've done a lot of very careful developing to get this integrated in with their Windows 10 system. And so as much as you can have this saved file system on your um, your actual cloud and then also on each of your devices, say when you pull up your computer, there's a certain file that you set up or a spot in your file system to show all the files. Instead of it having to download all of those and store them locally while they're also connected to the cloud, OneDrive is able to have all of those files stay in the cloud until the second comes that you're like, okay, I want to use this file. And then it will reach out. And as it says here, files on demand is it allows you to access those without taking up any space on your PC. So that's something that's very handy for say a Chromebook user that has limited amount of space on their computer. That's something that um, a lot of other people might find that's like, oh, that's exactly what I've been looking for. Um, another thing with OneDrive is that they are the only, um, as of now, they are one of the only cloud services that allow you to look at all of your files on your Apple iWatch and, and even view things in details. So there's a few legs up on their part. Um, but realistically, it's another one of those choices that it's like, look, you can't go wrong with choosing this guy at all. So the next big one up is iCloud that allows Apple to have each user, um, whether you have an iPhone and a Mac and an iPad, to allow all these files to seamlessly be connected to all of your devices and for it to be something that's like almost you never have to think about. You never have to act on or change a certain setting or think about how your file system's laid out. It just works. And I think that's one of the greatest parts 
about iCloud is with the iOS devices, you're in an ecosystem that does a lot of the heavy lifting for you and you can seamlessly move across things. But the one fallback that comes with this platform is what if you're not on an iOS device? That right away, you catch yourself, say, on a Windows PC and you want to go into your iCloud. Your majority of the times you're going to have to go to iCloud.com, log in, and go everything through that. There's not even an app for Android users, so you're really going to find yourself a little bit pigeonholed, say, if part of your devices you're using iCloud with and then another part you have an Android phone because you just got the new Galaxy S10 or something like that then you're dealing with a different problem. So in that case, I would 100% recommend iCloud for the user that already has their iPhone, already has their Mac, because it is the best product for them to integrate into their life and it's gonna almost be like it's not even there. While for a lot of other people, they're gonna have problems. And iCloud also does touch on all the other basic factors with these cloud devices uh, or cloud services. And just the fact that you can edit files together, all of these things are put together on each device, it saves your data and all that good stuff. Um, another thing that iCloud really offers is clean and unique is the fact of just breaking down automatic bit backups on your devices. These just happen consistently in the background and it's another thing that Apple just Creates, created an ecosystem where you're not really paying for their expensive product, the $1,200 phone or $2,000 plus iPhone or MacBook. You're realistically paying for the, the whole environment you're stepping into and the fact of all these little assisting things that come into this environment or the fact that you get this little extra uh, leverage up compared to other people that aren't using all the same Apple devices. But anyways, Great product, definitely not for you if you're someone who uses an Android phone or a Windows PC a lot. So next one in the lineup is Dropbox. And this guy has been in the game for a very long time uh, and really has a lot of dense features in the background that allow you to really get a lot for your power user kind of cloud service. And when I say like dense features, I'm meaning like 30 day old backups of your files. If your file changes multiple times through three weeks, say maybe one of your business assistants suggested something and you want an old version, some of the other services you're stuck to the current version and how that is in time. But with Dropbox, Pretty sure it's like an extra $3.99 uh, per month fee. All of these files will be saved, so you'll be able to go back in time and view things. There's a lot of other things that are offered with Dropbox that you kind of can catch in a lot of the other softwares. Works with all devices. You find yourself on a very simple and easy to use layout. There's collaboration tools. And look at it, just going, going in and going on for all this stuff that they got here. The one thing that I would say is potentially a negative for some people is just the fact that Dropbox's pricing is gonna be just a, a hair higher than the other uh, plans and other cloud services. And you're limited to only two gigabytes of space on that free plan. So, and, you know, it might not mean a lot for the extra five bucks you're gonna have to pay or 10 bucks right now, but when you think of using a cloud service for the next four plus years, or at least that's the type of user I am, I'm probably gonna be using one my whole life, um, you catch yourself in a dilemma where that extra five dollars can really turn into an extra six hundred dollars after five years of time. But whatever floats your boat comes with some amazing features that truly does make it worth it. So our next one is Box, and this isn't as well known as a cloud service as the others, but truly offers a leg up in a, in a certain dimension that the other applications don't have. There's a lot of different features that are all the basic needs, has all the usual like editing software and like, keeping all of your files on every single device that can work along. That's all basic, we know that at this point. But what it will offer is the integration with many different apps. So say you're already using Google Drive, the fact that you already get 10 gigabytes with Box, it's something that you can kind of pick up and add into your file selection and realistically it's seamless you know the fact that it works with all of these apps say if you're even a business entrepreneur based person it works with apps like Salesforce and different things so you really can find something that's just integrated with everything this is your number one choice right here now the one negative though is if you're in the free plan and the lower plans um, what you're gonna find is that 
So you're limited on the free plan to only 250 megabytes uh, for file uploading. Now, if you move up your plan, say if you want to actually go for the personal pro, five gigabytes, you go to the business plans, you're limited to two gigabytes. So you're most likely going to find yourself in these five gigabytes area. But that is the max limit. So say if you're a videographer, you, you shoot these big 4K files that are beautiful, you might have trouble with that. All of these softwares were truly on point and they all have their own individual thing that can really give you a leg up on and can help you save some storage in your laptop or allow you to see your device um, files from anywhere you are on any device. So I hope this video created an answer um, and it really gave you the best software to use and you can walk away from this video with that knowledge. Um, please drop a like and a share, or not a share, like and a subscription if you're into everything we're doing. Um, we're building a site to really really give even more software solutions and in turn offer an easier way for you to get this kind of compact knowledge in one place uh, and that was coming up soon but anyways thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a great day